Ah, all right there. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to my 2022 gaming desk tour. As you clearly see, I just died playing um, Call of Duty Warzone, but that's besides the point. This is something I haven't done in a while, and I figured this is a good time to do a desk tour to showcase what kind of setup I have right now, and also some of the things I actually have. So let's start off with the very most important thing, the desk. This is from Human Scale, which I've had for a couple of years now, and I really like it because this is a standing desk, something that you can, of course, raise or lift. Uh, I should be able to do it right now, and I'm just gonna set this aside. Just give you guys a weird look at it. Now, you can lift the desk up. You can, of course, bring it down. Um, I don't have it as an automatic standing desk. I do have a manual standing desk because I wanted to do some work while doing it, which is kind of foolish, but that's something I wanted to do. But it's really nice and uh, something to definitely check out. Now, in terms of pricing for all the stuff I'm going to mention in this video, it will be linked down below. So I'm not going to bore you with pricing, but show you some of the things that I use. Now, the most important thing for a gaming setup is your your chair. Now, a lot of people use gaming chairs. You've seen gaming chairs on this channel. But what I really like is the Human Scale Freedom Rest uh, chair. I've been using this chair for a couple of years now. And I've got to say, it's actually comfortable, especially if you're gaming for long periods of time. Or if you're just sitting down in front of your desk doing work, whatever, this chair does really well. It's got nice armrest. You can lift it up. Uh, you can actually set them, good lumbar support, and also just the nice spacing in terms of the distance between the, uh, the bottom of the chair to where your, of course, your, and your knees meet up. Solid chair, great for that whole long process. So that's, in, in terms of the stationary things that are on the desk most of the time, that really sets the tone. Now, you guys have probably seen something a little different. I do have the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra right next to my monitor. And you're wondering why do I have this here when I've got a pretty large monitor? Well, the reason I like it is because uh, of a couple of things. This has very nice connectivity and, and also syncs pretty well with my uh, Galaxy S22 Ultra. So that Samsung ecosystem pretty works pretty much well here. So I can actually have my text messages on here, which I will not be showing you, uh, but I can also just watch content separately. So if say I am doing some work and a YouTube video pops up that a buddy of mine wants me to watch, I can open it up here and I can start watching that video. And hey, look, it's actually Caleb. So stuff like that I can actually do. And I really like that screen size, 14 inches. I thought initially that would be dumb, but it really makes a lot of sense, right? Now, the next thing you see here is a brand new mouse pad and keyboard layout. This is from NZXD. This is the brand new function and tilt um, keyboard and mouse, and also the new Excel mouse pad, which is pretty nice. Now, normally I don't go for big mouse pads like this, but this actually has been pretty nice so far that I've been using it. Uh, and I'm using it with a new function keyboard. Now, the function keyboard is interesting because this is a fully customizable keyboard with custom keys, custom switches. Uh, and the good thing about it is that you can order this in different configuration. I have a, um, I have a TKL version here. You can get a 10 keyless or full size keyboard. A couple of things here, you can customize the color of the keys. You also have your volume rock on the left-hand side and the play buttons are on the left-hand side. Quick access to that. Uh, it also has a palm rest that magnetically locks. And you can build the keyboard on NZXC's website, which is pretty cool. So I've got a keyboard that has um, yellow keys. It's got some nice silent keys here. Can't remember the names of the keys they actually use, but they are very good, very silent. Let's take a quick listen as I pretend to type here. And that was a lot of gibberish type in there. And Daniel's looking at me going like, please don't send that to anyone. But anyway, I really like this keyboard. I like the customization that you can see. I also have uh, braided cables here that are yellow and black. It comes with standard black, but you can order separate cables for it. Now, the tilt mouse is pretty much a standard mouse. Uh, it's super light, uh, but there's really nothing crazy about it. It kind of works well as a nice pairing if you get, you're picking up both, especially if you want to match the colors. But I would say in terms of a mouse, it's solid, nothing too crazy or nuts about it. Now, in front of that, I have Ryan Reynolds. Yes, Ryan Reynolds. 
I'll just leave it there and we move up to our monitor. As you know, I just did my full review on the uh, Alienware um, QD OLED monitor. It's a 34 inch monitor. Exact model number is, I believe, AW3423DW. So Alienware QD OLED monitor. I love it. It's an absolute great monitor, 175 Hertz. Uh, refresh rate in terms of response time 0.1 milliseconds but this is a great monitor for that gaming session everything you need to know you guys have seen that um, and this monitor just works well I really like it and it kind of pairs well having two OLED displays I've got the monitor I've also got uh, my tablet as well so that's actually pretty good now on top of that right here this is my Logitech stream cam uh, it's a solid webcam, especially when I just jump on calls. If uh, I don't stream, I don't do any game streaming whatsoever. So that's something I don't do. But for me, for business calls and also just chatting with friends, this does a good job. But they have a really good software. If you're a streamer, I think you should definitely check it out. Really solid piece of, um, of tech here. Now, moving over to the side as we get closer here. We have the ROG Throne. Now I've had this for a couple of years. I really like this because it serves multiple purposes. So the Throne is a headphone stand. It's got RGB lighting from of course ASUS, but it does a couple of things. It's got a built-in DAC, it's got an ESS DAC in there, as well as also wireless charging. So I have a wireless charging pad I can use to charge my smartphone, but I also have a DAC if I want to use my wired headset um, or any of the headsets I have here uh, to use for my gaming session. And speaking of headsets, at least for this week while I'm doing this video, I'm actually checking out the Astro A10 gaming headset. It's a wide headset. It's a much cheaper headset. It comes in a couple of colors and flavors. I actually like it. And because it's wired, the throne makes a lot of sense. I don't have to sneak to the back of my PC or anything um, to connect it. I can connect it to the throne and it's got a nice uh, DAC into it. Now, as headsets goes, I like the fact that Astro is dabbling in more colors. You can get this in four colors. This is kind of like the uh, purple, lavender. They've got a black. Uh, they've got like a PlayStation and Xbox version. This is kind of like a G PC version. They're all the same. Drop down uh, mic. Of course, you pull it up to mute. The controls are on here. There's a volume controls. And then your mic, your mic monitoring is actually done within your game or your software, whichever you're using there. So pretty nice, solid, you know, uh, gaming headset. Now, let's move over to the star of the show. This is my brand new gaming PC. I just built it. I built it for a couple of reasons because I've been testing out some more high-end monitors and I also wanted to see what Intel 12th Gen is all about, right? We've seen a lot of stuff. A lot of people have made videos on there. This is, this houses a 12900K. Now, the case you're looking at here is the Fractal Structure Case. I like this case just because of the grill is very different. You look at it from the front, it looks really nice. It's got, it's, you've got tinted glass broach on the front and the back or either side of the case, if you will. Now, I want to give a big shout out to ASUS for actually sending me a lot of components in here as well as also Intel for sending that 12900K. So what do we have here with this, uh, with this case and this build? So the first thing you notice is that the power supply is on the top. When you open up the case and open everything up, you don't actually house the power, si power supply below, it's on the top. And I do have an ROG Thor power supply, which is a great power supply. It's uh, platinum, 1000 watts. And one of the cool thing about it, it's got LED lights across. Yes, ROG lights, of course. But you also have an, an LED indicator that shows you the amount of wattage. So it shows how much watts you're using at that point in time. Moving into the case, you can see I've got some RGB uh, RAM. Now my RAM is from G-Skills, it's, G it's the Trident Z5 DDR5 RAM. I've got 64, 64 gigabytes of RAM in here. This can go up to 128. I didn't have enough money to spend for 128 gigs of RAM because it's just way too much. But because I can actually do that with this system, it goes a long way. Now speaking of the system, ASUS has everything built in here that runs all together. So you are going to be using uh, the ASUS create software. Now, I'll show you the software in a second, but that helps in a lot of ways. The reason I like it is because this is all running on the ASUS ROG Maxima Z690 Hero motherboard. 
This motherboard has just a plethora of functionalities built into it. One of the great things is just the IOs at the back. You've got a lot of connectors. You've got six USB 3.2, you've got two Thunderbolt, you've also got a USB Type-C at the back as well. Now that also goes to complement the IOs on the top of your case, uh, which uh, it gives you two USB 2.0 and one uh, USB-C at the top. And the motherboard supports uh, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which is great, as well as Wi-Fi 6C. Now, I love the fact that I've got options with this motherboard. So even though I have it wired, I do have Wi-Fi 6C connection, which brings me to something else that ASUS sent us, which is the ROG Rapture Wi-Fi gaming router. Now, I love this router for a couple of things. Besides the fact that it's got more antennas than you can actually imagine on here, this is a Wi-Fi 6E gaming router, which actually goes into to, to actually curtail all your gaming needs. Now you've got, of course, a 2.5 gigab gigabit ethernet port, so I can connect it directly to this. Wi-Fi 6E if I need to, especially if I am not close to my router, I don't have long enough cables. Um, as well as also, you've got you know, ROG lighting, uh, you've got a tri-band setup. This is also a mesh router, so if you've got a much bigger place and you want to extend it, you can actually add another to make it uh, you know, fill up your space. You also have tools that help your gaming sessions and also reduces your latency to the highest. So absolutely love that, it's, it's pretty great. Now, in terms of storage, this motherboard supports three M.2 slots key M and two M.2 slots via the ROG Hyper M2 card. Now, this card allows me to put two M.2s there. I can do run rate zero, whatever I want to do. But the main star of my storage is the Seagate Beska Ingot M.2. Goes up to one terabyte. You can see it looks like Beska Ingot from, of course, Star Wars, Mandalorian, and it's got a pretty sizable heat sink, so it actually stays cool. So this bad boy has to be showcased on the motherboard. And it's read and write speeds are up to 7,300 megabits per second. So that is pretty fast for your gaming sessions. Now, the motherboard is solid. We've got our, our RGB lighting across the motherboard there. We have the couple of things you will see here. Now, I know you can see that screen, but I'm just gonna hold that for a second. My GPU here is a Strix 3080 Ti. This is not just a regular Strix 3080 Ti. This comes with its own water cooler and it's got its own uh, water cooler system. So this is not just the card itself. You can see the tubing that goes and I do have the uh, radiator actually uh, at the bottom of my case here with of course RGB lighting. I love this because this allows me, if I want to overclock the system, I can, and I've got enough cooling to do that if I want to overclock my graphics card. Now, to the main showstopper here, and something I actually want to actually show you. So, coming closer. All right, so this is pretty cool. You can actually open the case quite easily. You can secure it down if you want to, but this showcase is the most intricate and coolest thing in the case, which is, of course, the ROG Rujin 2 uh, AIO cooler. Now, this is a 360 cooler that also has an LCD display on there. As you can clearly see, that is Genos from One Punch Man who is charging up and getting ready to fight his master. But I can go ahead and customize and change that to something else. Um, and that is, of course, One Punch Man throwing a punch. So I love this because this adds more just, you know, a customization to your PC build for whatever you want to do. And it's just, it's just fun. So for me, I usually have Superman there. He's holding everything together, providing power to the system. So it makes a lot of sense, but it's pretty cool. And the software from uh, Asus, the Amocrate software does a fantastic job of allowing you go in to customize and change, say the lighting in your system. You can go ahead and also uh, look at change game profiles, you can change your fan speeds, all that kind of stuff is all built in and it's very easy to use. What about gaming performance, right? Like how well does this actually handle while gaming? Well, first off we did Cinebench and the Cinebench scores were impressive. Uh, Multi-core scores were super high, 24,000. Uh, single score scores were around 18,000 or so. so Really solid performance uh, from you know Cinebench, but we don't care about that. What about the games we like to play? So we ran some benchmarks, and uh, you can see uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Its highest settings 
We got 194 frames per second. I have not seen that in this game uh, with any other system I've had. So that was to me was truly impressive there. Um, and then of course the game I usually play is Call of Duty Warzone and Warzone I was getting up to about 135, 140. 140 was probably the highest, uh, but Warzone again can vary in range. And finally we, we played um, Doom Eternal and Doom Eternal we're getting 200 and something like the low 200s in terms of uh, frame rates. Again, you know, compared with the um, Alienware QD OLED monitor, it is truly impressive. Now, the other thing is that you're gonna see some videos coming up pretty soon where I've actually used some eSports um, eSports monitors that have super high refresh rates and this system absolutely kills it. I wouldn't spoil that for you, but that's coming up soon. But either way, guys, that is my setup. Now, the only thing I'll say is that usually I don't have my PC up here. I usually have it underneath and that's because I like to have a lot of space on my desk. As you can see, placing the PC underneath just gives me so much space and so much room uh, so that I can have things around and you know I can use as much of the desk as possible. But if you have any questions, any comments about my desk setup, is there anything you like? Let me know. Otherwise, guys, use the links down below if you want to pick up any of those devices, anything that tickles your fancy, including, yes, this stand. I know some of you are looking for that. And my wallpapers, both of them will be in the description of this video. So this is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy entertainment.